Welcome to today's event where I have the pleasure to present Mundundu. Uh, today the, the company is presented by Martin uh, Müller, the CEO, and Jesper Drexler, uh, chairman of the board. Uh, just some housekeeping uh, information. Uh, you can, through the presentation, ask questions in, in the field uh, right to you. Uh, I'll try and see if it fits in there or else we will pick it up and, and, and take the questions uh, after the, the, the presentation. But for now, I think I, I think I will hand it over to you, Martin, and, and, you, and you can take it from here. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, and thank you very much for everyone who is, uh, has decided to spend half an hour listening in to, uh, to our presentation of, of, uh, of Mdundo. Um, I, really, I really appreciate um, your time. Um, my name is Martin. Um, I am, there we go. My name is Martin. I am the CEO and the co-founder of uh, of and um, together with me is uh, on the call Jesper. Uh, Jesper is the chairman of the board. Um, Jesper, Jesper has uh, experience as an entrepreneur and also as an investor, um, and in the last eight years has uh, been focusing uh, quite a lot on the African continent, I think it's fair to say, uh, with a number of uh, different other projects um, on the continent. Um, and on the board we also have uh, Jacob. Uh, Jacob has a background in finance and has been uh, spending and has 25 years of, of experience um, as CFO um, and, and as investor, and is uh, currently a senior account manager with uh, Vex Fund. Um, I moved to uh, Kenya in uh, 2012. Um, I moved there uh, with an investment fund called uh, 88 miles per hour, um, that has a little bit, I, I think it's fair to say, a Danish um, heritage in it, with uh, quite a number of, of, of Danish people involved in it. Um, and after I, um, I arrived in Kenya, I, I very quickly realized that there's uh, so many uh, really interesting uh, entrepreneurial opportunities um, across Africa, especially in the mobile space and especially in the, uh, in the tech space. Um, and uh, having seen what has happened in uh, Scandinavia uh, in the last 20 years in the, in the, in the music industry, um, I thought it would be really interesting uh, to look at, at that space. And together with a few colleagues, uh, we decided to uh, to start a Dundo and to start a music platform that could uh, achieve the same transformation that has, the transformation that has taken place um, in uh, the Western world uh, within Africa. So, what is Mdundo? Well, Mdundo is a music uh, is an African music service. It's available through mobile web, uh, which is basically just a, a website, um, but it's also available through an Android app. And as of uh, September 2020, um, we had uh, 27 million monthly downloads of songs from our platform. We had 6.4 million monthly active users of our platform. And we are focused uh, actively on uh, 15 African uh, countries. Um, the service is, uh, on the, on the left-hand side here, the service is the mobile web version, where basically uh, you can go in, you can get an overview of which artists are popular, you can uh, list, uh, read about, African music, and you can download and stream uh, the, your favorite music directly on your device. Um, but we do also have an Android app that gives uh, a more rich experience um, where you can make playlists and uh, yeah, it, sort of uh, very similar to, to the music services that you are probably familiar with uh, from the Western world. Um, if we jump straight into, oh, the music service is free of charge. So it's basically an, an app funded uh, free um, and I'll, I'll jump into the, 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 the commercial model a little bit more in, in a bit. If we look at the African market um, and the competitive space that we are in, we basically look primarily at, at three different axes. Uh, we look at the content offering that, the different, uh, that, are, that are available. Do the services have a very, international, um, a, very, a very strong international content offering? And do they also have a very uh, strong local um, content offering? Then we look at the target audience. Um, Africa is a very, very diverse continent. Um, we focus on sub-Saharan Africa, but even within sub-Saharan Africa, it's very diverse and there's a very big difference from one consumer segment to another. Um, so when we look at target audience, we differentiate it as high-end users, which is more app users, and the mass market, which is mostly the web users um, on the continent. And then we look at the ambitions of the uh, services on the continent. Uh, some services are very domestically focused. Some are combined with a more strategic partner who have specific focus in specific areas. 
and some have um, a much uh, has has, has uh, uh, sub-Saharan African ambition and uh, uh, like like our, like ourselves. So if you look at the different kind of uh, of the of the market, the services that looks the mostly like Imbrundo are actually um, other websites. Um, I've, I mentioned I named a few here: Two Exclusive, Niger Loaded. They are basically uh, illegal websites, and they're basically unlicensed music sites that uh, are distributing music the same way that we uh, had yeah, 20 years ago in in Denmark, where there's a lot of sort of peer-to-peer -peer sharing. Uh, 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 ripping services where you could basically get the music directly off. Um, we do have some other, uh, so those are basically the ones that look the most like us. Um, we do have some other uh, competitors in the space. Uh, we have a few uh, that I mentioned here, Duke, Spotify, and Deezer, which is uh, it's more international services that are looking into Africa. And then we have um, another segment, which is more uh, um, services that are bundled with a strategic partner. So there's a, there's a few mentioned, Boom and CN Music Time here, that uh, are very much focused on, on, uh, on where their strategic uh, partner uh, has, has a focus on. And then we have some domestic services. Where Ndundu really stands out and where we differentiate ourselves is very much on our content offering. So we have a very strong local content offering with more than 80,000 Af African artists on our platform. Um, and we also have a, a quite significant international um, content offering. Um, and in terms of target audience, uh, where we really stand out is that we have a very strong focus on the mass market. Um, the other players that we are looking at are very much focusing on the high-end app space, and we have a very strong focus on the, on the mass market, which is primarily a mobile web. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, how the, the competitive landscape is, is designed. So, Mbundu is uh, homegrown in East Africa, but we have a rapid uh, growth towards uh, Pan-Africa with a focus on a, a number of different countries um, across Sub-Sahara Africa. Um, when we were building the service initially, we always had very uh, big Pan-African ambition uh, and focused on that, uh, on building a service that could easily scale uh, rapidly uh, from the beginning onwards. Um, so, uh, right now, we currently have our focus in 15 markets, and we are moving that from 15 to 21 in the next two years. Um, and our commercial focus uh, is moving from two to five countries, uh, having a commercial focus on uh, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, uh, Nigeria, and, and Ghana. If we jump into uh, to our user growth in the last couple of years, um, what we have really experienced in the last yeah, year's time or so, as you can see here, is a rapid growth in outside of our home market. So our homegrown market was East Africa, but we started seeing a rapid spread into other territories, uh, West Africa uh, being now one of, the, one of the major ones, but also uh, Southern Africa is following, and a number of other uh, countries across Africa um, is following as well, um, as well as some global attention as the music industry in Africa is uh, growing at the moment, uh, and the there's a lot of people in Africa that live out, uh, from Africa that live outside Africa, that uses our service to get music uh, from uh, the African uh, continent. So, jumping a bit into our business model and uh, how we, the commercial aspect of the business. And um, we kind of focus on three different models. We have a premium model, which is basically app funded, which is uh, familiar with, uh, with, with the free version of, of Spotify for that matter. Uh, the premium model is something that has been very popular in emerging markets, so we are seeing it very commercially successful in Asia, in Latin America, and we believe that it's going to be a really strong uh, tier in Africa as well. Then we have the premium model. The premium model is something that has been very successful in the Western world, so uh, Spotify is very much known for their, free, for their premium uh, offering and premium version, um, but in emerging markets, it's still developing. Um, so it's something that we are looking at and seeing how do we fit that into the African continent. And then last but not least, telecommunication, uh, where we are partnering up with teleco, telco partners. That's a model that we've seen both in East and in West. And it basically um, uh, allows us to do billing and uh, grow our subscriber base through a telco uh, partner. Um, in telecommunication, uh, in the telecommunication industry, uh, content offerings like ourselves have started growing uh, rapidly in popularity as their market is uh, is developing, and so they are also looking at different content offerings to offer their subscribers. 
uh, similar to to what we to, uh, to to an, uh, an offering like ours. Our focus so far has been on premium, and so uh, what we have really seen in in the last financial year is a massive growth in the in the in our advertisement uh, in our advertisement tier, um, and that's a growth that we are uh, very much focusing on continue into uh, the current financial year, uh, growing especially our direct sales um, of audio ads but also our display inventory um, on the platform. Um, so that's really a, 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 a focus that we have as a company for now, is to focus on the, the, the premium version of our service. If we look at financial projections and forecasts for our users, we are expecting to move from yeah, the 6.4 million users we had in uh, September to 18 million in the next uh, yeah, 18 months from now. Um, and if you look at our uh, financial uh, basically, uh, what you will see is a very strong focus on uh, growing our top line, our revenues, but as a result of our uh, very uh, aggressive expansion at the moment uh, into the African territories, that will obviously also be reflected on our, on our bottom line and our, on our EBITDA. With that, I will hand over to, uh, to Jesper to touch a little bit on uh, peer valuation. Thank you very much, Martin. What, what we would like to Give you here is just an overview of if you look at transaction in the music distribution service industry, what valuations are we looking at? It's an industry where you typically look at valuation per active user. And as you can see from, from the slide, we do have uh, services which are valued up to around 115 US dollars per monthly active user. That is services we know from the West, like Spotify, Tidal, down to services like uh, Dear Savan, which is an Indian service which is the lowest benchmark we could find. It was valued in a transaction two years ago at 10 US dollars per monthly active user. If we compare it to what is the valuation today of Medunda, then with the current share price, we have a market cap of around $12 million. And with the user number of 6.4 million from September, gives a valuation of around 1.88 US dollars per monthly active user. Actually, if you take it on an enterprise, a value level, it takes it all the way down to one US dollar because we do have around 35 million Danish kroner in the bank. What is relevant to look at the case is, of course, the expectations. Uh, and we do expect to have 18 million monthly active users in two years' time, which takes the value per expected user in 2022 down to 55 cents. That gives a gap of 18x compared to Giusevan. Um, if we look at 2022, 18x. Then, of course, it's a fair question mark to say, is Giusevan a relevant uh, peer? Which we, we do believe it is. Giusevan was uh, quite a big uh, case from India. They had around 100 million users and it was sold. To, it was a music streaming service named Savan that was sold to a telco, Geo, in 2018 at one billion US dollars. It was a music service, is a music service that focused very much on a freemium model and on partnerships, exactly as Mudundu. So it wasn't like Spotify focused 100% on premium services, people paying a subscription. No, it focused on, on advertising and partnerships with telcos, like, like we do in Mudundu. Then say, okay, does India fit uh, the macroeconomy of sub-Saharan Africa? There are different metrics to look at, but clearly GDP per capita is, is very important. And GDP per capita in India is around 2,100 US dollars and a population of 1.3 billion people. If you look at sub-Saharan Africa, if you look at GDP per capita of $1,600, not that far away, and a population of 1.1 billion people growing massively. But our commercial focus, both currently and what's in pipeline for the next two years, the countries are actually matching the GDP uh, level of India. Then some people ask, well, do we see any tech acquisitions in Africa? Well, just uh, the last two years, there's actually been quite a few. The biggest one is uh, Jumia. That's like Amazon for Africa. It was listed on the New York Stock Exchange. And actually, within the last nine months, it is, it is up 10x now trading at a market cap of $3 billion. We saw Network International Holdings, they acquired DPO Group for $288 million. 
Paystack was recently acquired by Stripe plus two hundred million dollars. And as you can see, quite a quite a number of cases that was uh, undisclosed. These are just uh, just a few examples. That's actually quite a lot. So one thing is uh, the financial metrics in the case, but there's actually also a massive impact from what Mudundu is doing, and it's quite an alignment with the seven SDGs. So just a few examples is that we actually created income opportunities for more than 90,000 artists over the last couple of years. It's 90,000 90, people who didn't create any income from their, their jobs over the last, last many years. Around 50% of the employees in the company are, are women and we're highly supporting gender equality in Africa, which is something that's really needed to get Africa to the next level. We are highly, marketing can elaborate that, but we are but a part of our mission is legalizing the whole music industry across Africa. It looks a bit like it did in the Western world in the beginning of 2000, where we, a lot of us used uh, services like Casar, like a gray zone service. The truth is they were completely illegal. We just didn't, didn't want to acknowledge it. It's a bit the same situation in Africa today, and we are working with the artists, the industry, to, towards a legal industry. And that also means we've been forcing copyright and removed two million links on licensed music from Google over the last couple of years. So Mudundo is, we believe it's a fantastic investment case, but on top of that, it's actually creating a massive impact today. Um, and Martin's been living in, in Africa for the next eight years. Last eight years, he will be there for the next eight years as well. But he really knows what it takes to run a business on the African continent. Um, that was a, a, a bit on valuation and on impact. And Mikhail, I think we are at the Q and A now. Yeah, uh, people can ask it, uh, the, the questions out in the in the in the right field there. Uh, but but I, I would like to to kick off with with. But a question, you know, I do understand that that, that sometimes you you get a big uh, you, you see those transactions and the value gets imminent. But but looking at the other part of your model, you know, uh, monetizing those customers, do you have any proof in any countries if you scale back your your marketing, if you didn't use so much money on on, on getting new uh, consumers in, that that you actually could get uh, profitable on your own, you know, uh, monetizing those customers. Uh, so so to see kind of a, a a proof in the pudding on that, you know, if someone doesn't come up and, and scoop you, you know, you could actually turn this into to a viable business, you know, uh, in the long run, also through the commercial side. Yeah, it's, it's a very good question, Miguel. Um, we start, as Martin explained, we started out in East Africa, started in Kenya and then moved to the rest of East Africa, conquering that part. If we stopped our expansion and didn't move to be a Pan-African service, then we are around break even today in East Africa. So I think that's a, that's a pretty good uh, proof point. But that being said, we do believe the shareholder value is in creating a Pan-African music service and focusing on growth. And, and I have a question here. Do you still uh, expect an agreement with a telco in 2020? Uh, I can see uh, the message you told that in, in, in last update, you know, and, and maybe uh, can you can you tell a little bit more about it? Because coming from the Western world, it sh should look like a big opportunity. You know what what you see and and such companies are paying to, to you know to keep me as a customer. I know they can't put that much on top of the <laughs> the subscription probably in, in, in your part of the world. But but from from my side, it must be a, a big big opportunity. You know to offer this uh, not as a freemium as a premium through the through the telcos uh, subscription and and of course whether you will close a, a deal yeah yeah of course um yeah so that's still the expectation to close in a, in 2020 um and uh, with, with, a, with a telco um so that's that that still stands um in terms of the opportunity there you're, you're completely right um we have seen it all over the world that bundling music and content offering uh, together with telco has been very very successful um, and particularly on in, in emerging markets, it's a massive opportunity because it also uh, allows for billing in a much more effective way than what is uh, often taking place um, in these markets. 
uh, because basically in many of the markets, credit card is not as used as what we are used to in, in, in the Western world. Um, so it's, it's a really, it's a really uh, strong focus for us, also coming into next year. Um, uh, one is only the beginning. Uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are working very much on building a, 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 a pipeline of South Coast that we can work with in, a, across the continent. Um, and it's also something that as the telco industry is, is evolving, becomes really key. As you said yourself, you're seeing it in the Western world that uh, telcos, as their business becomes more and more data focused, are, much, are, are very keen on how they bundle their services um, together uh, with content offerings to help, uh, number one, attracting uh, users to their network or subscribers to their network, and also number two, increasing the, the RPU that they have uh, as a telco, as uh, the margins on data is, is, is not um, ex ex extremely, uh, or is not as, as attractive for them. And so that's a really big opportunity for us. And, and to get a feel of it, you know, because I'm maybe also missing it, I guess, uh, like India, you also have a, a middle class in, the, in this part of the world, you know, who could actually maybe wanting to have something on top of their mobile subscription. I know there's a big part who can't, but can you give me a touch of feel? It is, is the middle class like in India also a big, uh, you know, is it very divided, this country? So you actually have a big part. I don't know whether you have the, the total amount of middle class in, yeah, yeah. In, in your country, but if you have, maybe that could give a feel that, you know, there is a market for that. Well, it's, it's, it's a very simplistic way of looking at it, um, to look at that sort of classes in that way, because it's a massive span. And you have all the way up from uh, sort of a more Westerner uh, position and then all the way down. But you are exactly right. As Jesper also said before, there is very many similarities between India and Africa. And you have a massive middle class that is growing very rapidly at the moment. And they are consuming and they are looking at, at, at different products and services, um, uh, Indundu being one of them. Um, and in terms of like a people's willingness to pay for these sort of things, like the best, the best uh, indicator we have right now is that in, in Kenya, for example, there's a, there's a, there's a music uh, a product that is a, a bring back tune. It basically uh, plays a song when you call someone. And mm. uh, we see a very big uptake of that product of more than 10 million subscribers in a population of only around yeah, 46 million people um, paying a, a one US cent a day, one and a half US cent a day. It's a very sort of small amount for standing out and for signaling to uh, to your to your friends and to your social connections that you actually have access to this kind of uh, services. Perfect. Yeah, and, I, I think just to, sorry, just to add on, I think I think it's very important to understand as well that I mean, Sub-Saharan Africa is forty six countries, and you will find uh, you will find countries where the target audience for a service like Madunda is limited, but uh, in in most of the markets, there's, there's a good audience, and we of course focus our commercial effort on the countries where it makes sense. Perfect. And and I can see also a little bit of question going to that. You're really focusing on the on, on the freemium side, but but will you in twenty twenty will you in twenty one or, or forward look a little bit more on, on, on the premium, you know, the subscription model and see if it, maybe start testing whether it work or, or how is your plans there? Yeah, um, well, so it's again not that one or the other. Uh, I think what we, are, what we are a little bit used to in the Western world is that uh, you can sort of draw a little bit more conclusions of this is a service that is uh, applicable for everyone. Um, but in Africa, you've got to segment your service to different target audiences a lot more because the target audiences are very different from tier to tier. So we are looking at subscription model in the sense of uh, uh, are there particular tiers that it makes sense to charge for? Um, many of them are together with the telcos in the different markets that we are discussing. How do we make uh, paid tiers that are really attractive for the target audience? But that being said, um, we do not expect to see uh, the same the same thing that we've seen with Spotify, where everyone will jump in over a period of time from free to paid. That's that's not the model that has been uh, commercially successful in in emerging markets. It's something that has worked in the Western world, but in emerging markets, we've seen that uh, attracting massive massive audiences and monetizes them through different ways, uh, depending on the segment and the interest that they have, that has been the most commercially successful uh, model. Um, so the, the straight answer is yes, but it's not, um, it's not as exactly as what you would probably imagine from a Danish point of view. Oh, perfect. And, and I can see here there's a question, how large is your African market share? And, and maybe you have talked a little bit on the competitors, but maybe you can see, you know, it, from here, I know uh, 
I don't know much about Africa. I know that Chinese are digging into this country <laughs> and trying to find a way into this continent. Are you seeing some interest from Asian competitors? And is it a problem? Or do we actually see it as an opportunity maybe to to <laughs> to get sold at, at a point of time? You know, you talked about the competitors, maybe a little bit on the Chinese and, and who's trying to pick into the market. Are you seeing anything uh, there and, and your market share? Yeah. And um, so the market is very much as what it was in Europe 20 years ago. So you do have a situation where by far the majority of people, we, we, we have a, our, our own estimates that 93% of everyone are using illegal sites. So they use the sort of similarities to Kazar, Napster, and so on, that we also had like Pirate Bay and so on. So what we had uh, yeah, 20 years ago in, in, in Africa. But what we're seeing is a very rapid change in following what has happened in, in the Western world and that trend is actually highly due to the fact that services like us, as well as uh, uh, Deezer, which is uh, a Spotify competitor, Spotify is not yet launched in any other markets than a few North Africa and South Africa, but majority of Africa doesn't have a Spotify available yet. Um, but then the, the move of many of these services and, and ourselves as well uh, into the continent is really uh, moving people into legal services, and we're seeing a rapid uh, growth of an uptake of that. And um, if we look at the market share, then basically uh, around the different legal services, then basically the most dominant one at the moment is a, a Chinese-owned service called Boomplay. Uh, they have a model that's a little bit similar to Apple Music in the sense that they are pre-installed on, on the devices uh, that are the partner that they have. So that gives them a, a really good distribution. Um, but in terms of how their uptake actually is, there's not a lot of public pictures around it. So we, we sort of uh, tend to focus a lot on, on our own numbers and making sure that we grow our, our share of the pie. Um, and, and then, of course, as you're mentioning, uh, like in terms of uh, what will happen moving forward, like that, that I think, is, is all speculations at this point. So you probably have, have to ask them more than, than, than ask us. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah. so right now, if I should understand your question, yes, you have uh, competitors, but the biggest competitor is the illegal music service. Good. Yeah, good. I, I think just just to add on there, I think it's very important to understand that around eighty percent of the music that's consumed in Africa is African music, and the African artists are not organized in the way they are in the Western part of the world. So it also means that even if Spotify was available in most African countries then they wouldn't have this the appealing content offering. We definitely believe Spotify will be there, be there soon, but they're appealing to, to another market. They'll probably be appealing to top 2% of the market, like Apple Music is doing. Uh, people that want to listen to Western music and might have a Samsung or an iPhone, uh, but the, the service wouldn't, wouldn't really fit into the mid market. And just to, I mean, we're estimating Apple probably has a market share of around 2% in Sub-Saharan Africa. So, so it's not really what, what keeps us awake at night. They'll be there, but they'll j just keep on pushing the industry towards legalization. And I think you actually jumped because the next question was you uh, you should think why uh, Spotify hasn't moved in. I think actually you answered it. Uh, the market is not really fitting to them. Uh, so so I think that is answered. You know, I have maybe have a well, final question. Can, can, can I just add to that one? So I think yeah, uh, a part of it, uh, sorry, sorry, Michael. Uh, uh, if you look at uh, other markets that they have launched in, uh, they launched in India, I think last year, at the beginning of last year and so on. I think it's fair to assume that if you, if you look that up, many of the things that they were facing by launching in India, the same they are facing here. Um, they, they are just about saying they are looking at the market, but I, I do think that, that uh, like, that's a good uh, benchmark. Uh, they, that, that, that's, a, that's probably what I would look into you know, to answer that. And then looking through your presentation, if we should uh, finish with this question, you, you many, many times yourself mentioned 46 countries, it's not the same, but is there a brand, you know, if you get a brand, you know, a supermarket chain or something like that in one country that you can actually spread out the marketing machine through there, or is it two different the countries, you know, but that, because that could give you some leverage, you know, getting on one of the local market, getting something, uh, you know, that, that actually is marketing all through Africa, or is it two uh, different markets that, that that's a, a impossible model? No, I mean, uh, Martin's probably right to, to answer in detail, but I think what's important to understand here as well that African music for, from East Africa, for instance, is popular in West Africa, and Western Af African music is popular in Eastern Africa. So it means if we run a music service in, uh, in only in East Africa, we would have a competitive edge if we have Western African music. 
and therefore the artists actually help us spreading it as well, spreading the brand as well on social media, etc. So definitely, definitely leverage that. Uh, Martin, maybe you can explain a bit about what what is it we're doing. Um, no, yeah, I think I think you you answered it pretty pretty well. I think it's it's very much about uh, it's very much about scaling and and getting across uh, to 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 as many uh, markets as possible. And we do find that if you look at uh, at our at our materials uh, before, like the initial uh, step is like it becomes easier and easier basically as you as you start scaling into other territories because there's a lot of synergies. There is a lot of partners, for example, in the telco space that I'm more than one market. Uh, the music is spilling over uh, to some extent. And even if it's not spilling over, if you go to a new country and you already have a really high, like they know an artist from Nigeria, for example, that you're already working with, then you start having that spillover effect. So we do find that as, as you're seeing in our user numbers, that's how we're experiencing many parts of our business, that there is a some sort of, um, uh, it, it becomes easier and easier to, to, to go into new, new territories. So it's, it makes a lot of sense for us. Perfect. I think uh, that should be the concluding remarks from you. Uh, thank you to both Jesper and Martin for presenting the case, thank and, and thank you to the audience for, for, for questioning. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time.